Hello, this mini lecture is on rational expectations theory. To start with, in economics, people's expectations of the future are very important because they can themselves affect how the economy develops. For example, John Maynard Keynes, one of the most famous economists of the 20th century, showed how optimism and pessimism drives the business cycle. When firms are optimistic, and they expect business to pick up, they're more likely to raise investment in plants and equipment and hire employees, both of which drive booms and vice versa. In the financial markets, bond yields and mortgage rates tend to depend mostly on expectations of how central banks will set short-term interest rates in the coming years and these rates affect the housing market and the overall economy. Inflation is particularly sensitive to expectations of how it will develop in the future through wage setting and price setting by firms. These determine the cost and therefore the price of goods and services and the rate at which these prices go up is of course what inflation is. So what is rational expectations? Well, Thomas Sargent, a Nobel Prize winning economist and pioneer in the field, said it's often thought of as a school of economic thought, but he would rather describe it as a modeling technique. Rational expectations is basically what it sounds like. It is a fundamental assumption that people form their expectations of the future in a rational or a logical way. They take into account all available information as well as past experience. It doesn't necessarily mean that expectations are accurate, but is based on the idea that people don't make repeated mistakes or consistent errors, but rather learn from them. The approach contrasts with the previous methodology called adaptive expectations, where people's assumptions were assumed to form purely on the basis of past outcomes. That idea broke down in the 1970s when inflation kept going higher and higher and higher, and people realized they had to take that change into account. This sparked what's called the Rational Expectations Revolution in Macroeconomics, led by Robert Lucas. But how realistic are rational expectations? Well, I was initially skeptical when I learned about it as a student because I realized that people were often irrational in their behavior. Rational expectations is admittedly an extreme assumption, but it's arguably as realistic as the old-fashioned approach of adaptive models, which assume that people were purely backward looking. In reality, expectations are formed by multiple factors, including current events and the news. For example, when the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2020, people correctly realized that the economy would take a hit and prices and the stock market and interest rates would soon fall, which they did. Rational expectations can also be considered more realistic for the economy as a whole, even if many individuals are not so rational, because the main players in the economy, such as the large firms, governments, labor unions, and certainly the financial markets, tend to be better informed and behave more rationally than the general public. Moreover, even if all individual expectations were not rational, the aggregate of them may be more so in the form of what's being called an unbiased estimate. This idea is similar to what's called the wisdom of crowds, not to be confused with the madness of crowds. Apparently, if one asks a, a group of people to make a guess about something, even that they don't know much about, their average guess often turns out to be surprisingly close to the correct value. In economics, the consensus forecast or the median prediction of economists tends to be better over time than any individual forecasters. 
So rational expectations may be considered partially realistic, but regardless of how realistic it is, economists simply have to make some simplifying assumptions in this complicated real world to be able to put together any meaningful theories. Rational expectations also allows what's called internal consistency of economic models, making them more robust and elegant. Finally, I would argue that rational expectations is simply a necessary and obvious assumption in economics, which as a field generally assumes, rightly or wrongly, rational behavior. That is that people optimize consumers maximize their utility and firms maximize their profits. So that's it. Although you might be interested in my accompanying lecture on the efficient market hypothesis, which is a key application of rational expectations for the financial markets. Thanks for listening.